I've been wanting to do this video or at least thinking about doing this video for probably about a week in response and sort of as a culmination of something that I have been involved in, I would say, over the last month, but I guess maybe it goes a little further in terms of a, what would I say, a conflict that I, did I begin it? I don't know, but I'll, I will take, I will take the blame, let's say, or the, I, I will take the responsibility that I, if I didn't begin this conflict, I certainly helped to exacerbate the conflict and did not, did not seek to, let's say, to disengage from it and to de-escalate it. And I think in some ways that has been uh, positive for me, but because it has been positive for me in terms of the things that I have realized out of it, and, and much of it has been a uh, realization of my own failings, I wanted to at least have a record and put out a statement, if you will, from my heart, uh, apologizing in one vein, and then at the same time answering my critics, the criticism of me for my behavior during this period of time. And, uh, and to answer that criticism honestly, and to certainly give credit where credit is due, and not just dismiss the criticism out of hand, but in, in fact to not even address the things that I would dismiss, because I've spent quite a bit of time uh, praying and meditating on the things that did come back to me, because I think that there is some valid criticism in there that I have taken to heart and that I am thankful was made because it allowed me to see some things in my own behavior that I would like to, to grow past and places where I could be better. And so I'm not going to bring up the exact conflict and all of that. I'm not going to bring up names because I think that a lot of this is just on principle. And for me, these are things and these lessons I will be able to use moving forward. And so hopefully this is helpful to some other people as well. Uh, hopefully my own sort of journey in terms of looking at, at myself and my behavior through the eyes of others and the reactions of others will be helpful to other people just uh, to sort of talk about principles. So, so I think the first place to start is on the criticisms. And I, again, I'm not going to address the conflict. Those who know the conflict sort of know the situation. Those who are involved in the conflict know the situation. But again, 10 years from now, me looking back on this, it's still going to be valuable. And uh, I, I hope that I have embodied the lessons that I've learned during this period of time. So I made some statements about an individual and about uh, about certain individuals, a group of individuals, and let's say a movement within a community that I've been a part of for years. And within a community that has lots of people who are my friends, lots of people who are colleagues, lots of people who I care about, lots of people who I have considered allies throughout the years. And the things that I said, regardless of whether my uh, conscious intention at the time was to be inflammatory, it really doesn't matter because clearly it was inflammatory what I said. It inflamed a lot of passions and got people into a situation where they were divided in a way that they hadn't been before. And for that, for that, I want to apologize. I want to apologize because what I created is like the definition of a scandal from where the word scandal comes from. It, it means stumbling block that if I was trying to get across a message and if I was trying to get across uh, an idea to people who I cared to get that idea across to. And because of the way that I presented it, I created a stumbling block, a trap. Scandalone is scandalone is 
uh, it means a stumbling block, but like a trap. So it's like, here I'm trying to communicate the message, and then I do this inflammatory thing or say this inflammatory thing, and the clear result was that everything stopped at that point. That like that was where, it, I, but I created that. It's on me. I, I take that on myself. I did that. Um, I could make a lot of justifications for it. I'm not going to make those justifications regardless of whether what I said was an accurate portrayal or what, or it was not an accurate portrayal. It still doesn't matter. I created a, I created a, a stumbling block. I created a place where the conversation basically stopped and then this became the thing. And quite honestly, that's, that's a huge failing on my part. Because either if I'm going to publicly speak about an idea, if I'm going to publicly speak about a concept, I either need to present it without introducing stumbling blocks or I just need to shut up and just not do it. If I can't do it without creating a stumbling block, then I need to just not do it. Because, you know, the things that I was saying, it was very hypocritical of me. The things that I was saying, what I was trying to communicate was that there was a group of people doing things that were counterproductive. And then in doing that, I went and was counterproductive. It would have perhaps for many people, for a significant number of people, it actually could have been more productive. Time will tell. And hopefully those same people would, would, would see this and perhaps this can do some therapeutic you know, perhaps this this can mitigate that a little bit, but still, I'm sorry. I really am. Um, because, you know, I, I saw that what it did was for certain people who may... My concern was, was, was not for the person I was talking about. My concern was for the individuals who might follow down that path. And I put them in a situation where they had to defend the individual that I was talking about where they actually had to entrench themselves on the path that I was saying I was trying to pull them off of. So if my message, if the point of my message, if my intent was to pull them off of the path, but by my own failings, I stuck them more strongly to the path, that's missing the mark in a big way. And of course, that's the, that is the, the etymology of the root of the word sin to miss the mark and so that's a big miss the mark counterproductive is a huge miss the mark so that is that is a sin on my part and potentially i put people in the exact situation that i was saying i was trying to get them out of and so i'm sorry and that that was kind of one of the criticisms of me was Perhaps I agree with what you're saying. This was what pe what I, I heard quite a bit. Perhaps I agree with what you're saying, but the manner in which you are saying it is making it such that I can't listen to you or that, that, that I want nothing to do with you because of the manner in which you're saying what it is that you're saying. And... You know, I think I went in and I justified that to people and I, I went back and forth, but I want you to know, like, I heard it. That's correct. I could have done that better. In the future, I will do better if it turns out that I even decide to continue to speak publicly about these things. That That is still up in the air for me. Um, then there were was kind of another two-part criticism of me. And while, while there were things that were irrational and, you know, I pushed back on to try to peel them away, I will try to steel man the criticism as, as best I can. As best I can, the, the, the criticism as I've sort of understood it and, and kind of peeled it back is something to the effect of, uh, you are telling me to not take this action, to not, let's say, follow this individual, to not be involved with this group, but you yourself 
are sitting in a position where, let's say, you can say that because of, for whatever reason, you know, I think there are a lot of misunderstandings about, you know, people, I saw that people think I've got some sort of Bitcoin fortune that like, oh, or I have a fortune from being on TV. And so I'm like, you know, financially so secure that I never have to do anything and I could just be anywhere in the world. And, you know, that that's not the case for me. Okay. Um, I have, I, I have just st structured my life in such a way that I would be able to make certain moves if I needed to make certain moves. And I have surrounded myself with the type of people uh, where I would have access to information about where those moves would be. And I've also, no doubt, not all of me, I've also been incredibly blessed in terms of the wife that, that God blessed me with, in terms of the the... the life path to enable me to run across certain certain skills and and whatnot that I've been able to pick up so there's an incredible I don't want to use the term privilege because that's bad but I I certainly I have to acknowledge that I am blessed in that and that that is not something that is available to everyone and that everybody's experience is not that and everybody couldn't uh necessarily let's say leave from where they are not that I not that I have been saying you must, right? But I do understand and I do see the criticism of somebody saying that. Um, and then there was there was the additional criticism of somebody saying sort of tied into that was you are talking bad about the only people who are the, the word that kept being used was like staying and fighting. And that you've like fled the fight. And, you know, wh while I think it's, I, I've, I'm able to like step out and like justify like, well, oh, fled the fight. I've done more work. I've continued the work that I've been doing for years and years. And I've done, been able to do more work here based on the, the freedom that I've been able to accrue for myself and my family here and the lack of stress the type of work that I do really requires that I'm able to be focused, and that does require being in a good position. But the criticism, I think, is valid because I have not been communicating the work that I've been doing. And I have not been to the public, and I have not been, let's say, dumbing, I don't want to say dumbing it down, but like I have, I have not been presenting it taking the time to present it in a way that is going to be of maximum use to the lowest common denominator. And I'm not saying that the people making this criticism are so, a, a lower individual, but just to say that their background may not be mine, their interests may not be that. So again, it's in a situation where if I'm going to present and tell somebody, don't do this, but I'm not going to offer them an alternative that they can do that 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 the type of person who would be doing this thing can do perhaps and i this is something that i need to pray on more and i need to medic meditate on more perhaps i just need to shut up perhaps i just need to shut up perhaps if somebody asked me hey come on my show and and Talk about this situation. Perhaps I just need to say no. Why didn't I say no? Was my ego tied into that? Was my pride tied into that? Was me having the ability to express my opinion to the public and getting an en uh, endorphin rush from that or whatever? Is that tied up in that? Probably. Does that... Is that an indication of my, not probably, definitely. Is that an indication of my own failing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know what? Criticisms have been leveled in, in some crude ways, but in the, in the bottom, is there a kernel of truth? Is there a kernel of truth that's a, a message of how I could be a better individual and the things that I need to work on to... to have my own professed values to not be a hypocrite and have my own professed values expressed in the way that I manifest myself in the world? Absolutely. And so I apologize for that as well. Now, in terms of being able to provide that, that sort of 
solution to the public, that I still have to figure out. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if it's appropriate. Uh, you know, there is a group of people who I am providing my solution to on an ongoing basis and a small community of people who have read my books or taken my classes and, you know, who reach out to me privately. And it's a smaller group of people. You know, we have private telegram groups. We have, you know, I speak with people privately. I, there's a group of individuals who are here uh, on island who have decided to come here and we meet and we sit down and we talk regularly. And the, the, for me to say certain things is not inflammatory for these people because they have a broader context of a, a longer conversation. But for somebody to just be encountering me and I'm saying things that are inflammatory, I apologize. So uh, the last thing, what I do think that I can present, while I don't have the ability at this time, and so publicly I'm going to shut up about it, I don't have the ability at this time to give, let's say, like concrete steps of what someone can do, uh, like in, in some broad public I don't even know if that type of solution is possible for, for what's coming, right? If people want to sort of start walking down the path with me, it is out there. It is public. If people want to participate in my classes, great. Uh, if they just want to check out like my Twitter, that that's probably going to be the extent to, to which I, I uh, do things publicly besides maybe a few conversations that I really, you know, plan out and am, care, am careful about. Um, you know, my classes are there. And uh, there's a group of people involved in that, and my newsletter is there, and there's, you know, private groups associated with that. And I think that if you want to be part of that community, that opportunity is there. But what I do want to offer is, and, and, and the last part about this, is a vision of, at least the vision of the, the future that can help to my vision of the future so that perhaps you can frame the context in which I have spoken about all of this. And it's, I've, I've done kind of bits and pieces and some people have said, you're a vague wizard, right? People are like, you just speak in riddles. You're speaking in all kinds of Zen Cohen's and all of this. Why are you not just being straightforward and speaking straightforward? So I will speak straightforward about what is coming. And then you can take that as you will. You can believe me, you can not believe me, but at least it'll give you some understanding of what I truly and genuinely see as coming. And you can see whether the things that I've said in the past have lined up or not, and then you can just decide for yourself, right? So here's what's coming. What's coming is a scenario, and this is going to, this is going to happen gradually, but it's going to happen faster than you imagine all of the pieces, and it's already being put into place. We are going to see in the next, let's say, five years, under five years, which is nothing, by the way. Like, if you start a business, you know, it's going to take you two years to get off the ground and probably five years before you'll feel like, okay, I've got a business. Um, what we are going to see is the introduction and evolution of what is now being introduced as uh, these vaccine passports. And this is going to create a two-tier society. Uh, it will eventually evolve into what China has in terms of their social credit system, where your ability to participate in public life is going to be dictated by, in many, in, in many cases, algorithms, but it is going to be dictated by a, a central value system. And if you do not go by that value system, your ability to participate in public life is going to be severely stifled. And the degree to which it is stifled is going to increase over time uh, slowly, looked at historically, but quickly in terms of, of our lifetime. And it will happen so incrementally that most people will, you know, they'll take each little piece, like first is the vaccines, then it's going to be whittled down to a point where most individuals are just simply going to, to go along with it. And in two generations, it'll be the new normal. 
coupled with that very importantly is going to be the central bank digital currencies and what evolves from out of that and this is going to be a complete control over your finances and people don't quite realize what these things are and what they look like but they were built by the the in the i've been trying to you know help people to understand this was built by the mit digital currency initiative in a group that was headed up by basically the, the not, or, or or worked on by the lead developer of uh, bitcoin core of btc so this is not being done by slouches this has been done by for the last five years this is something that the central banks have wanted to do and um, we're going to see the feds version all of the countries will have it many of them already do and they're in the wild japan switzerland china and the fed is going to release it into the u.s and europe will have it as Euro in the euro and it will start to spread around the world and this is going to be tied to that other social credit system and so your ability to buy and sell your ability to participate in all kinds of things everything from getting internet access to being able to travel as we see these that is the frog in a pot that's already coming and so this is what you need to be thinking about if you have a desire to not to not be within that system and by within that system what i mean is even if you just reject it but you don't have an alternative all it is is suffering you are still in that system you are just the suffering you are the example to others of the pain that they are going to have if they reject it there is no nobility there there is no path forward from there you and your family will simply expire you will cease you will cease to exist over time and so all other things right now this is the flood that's coming Metaf this is the metaphoric flood and that i've been you know hinting at in my vague wizardry and the ark are systems by which we are able to communicate with each other and we are able to buy and sell to do commerce with one another and those who have those systems can then build all of the other things those who have those systems in place will be able to have knowledge continue forward because as this happens we are going to see willful self-censorship and also memory holding, as we already have. You know, go and try to find Stefan Molyneux's work. Go and try to find James Corbett's work, you know, in public. If you did try to, it, you won't just run across it anymore. For better or worse, right? These are, these are, regardless of what I may think of their individual politics or whatever, the, I, there are valuable ideas in there that have changed the lives of people and helped them to, to see reality for what it is. And so this is what's coming. There is nothing more important. This is building the ship. You can figure out, this is, you're going to put the animals on it, and you can figure out what the world looks like after. You can figure out where you're going to go, what you're going to do, how you're going to build in Kapistan or this neo cameral whatever that people are now talking about you can think about the politics after that you can think about all that other stuff after that if you don't have a means right now and it's not just that it'll be like somebody said oh we'll just take what the agorists give us that's not it now you are going to need to have the knowledge yourself you are going to need to know how you can spin up a node, do the cryptography, attach yourself to a mesh network, build a mesh network. You have to have that knowledge because the people that have that knowledge are not going to share it with people who are in there, who are not in, in their group. It's just look, look up Sami's dot, which was the self-publishing in in the soviet union that a lot of people say was the thing that was most responsible for bringing down the soviet union they were able to keep the knowledge of the outside world coming in and they they had 
the clandestine printing presses. They weren't making guns. They were printing books. And ma- much of that was Orthodox Christianity and Catholicism and Protestantism, but also literature because it just wasn't available. This is what we're seeing. This is what's happening before your eyes. Now, how you choose to go about that, if you say, you know, if you want to say, oh, Bitcoin genius class, oh, well, what if I, your class, you're out here hawking classes? Okay, I am. I don't know what else to do at this point. Besides that, and follow God. That's all I know. And those two things are going to be very important. And that's what I'm doing. Okay? But however you find it, it doesn't matter if it's through me. Okay? Obviously, the knowledge is out there. Otherwise, how did I get it? But if you, I can guarantee you that I can give it to you in a, faster. I can take you there faster. Right? But you can learn it yourself. But you need to get the real knowledge. And the real knowledge is the real technical knowledge of how to build and connect yourself to these systems and then how to communicate using encryption and get down to the math if you can such that if you that it's up here and that if you just found a laptop somewhere maybe you carry a little bit of software with you on a thumb drive or something but if you just found a laptop somewhere that you could reconstitute yourself that's what's going to be needed Those are going to be the individuals that are carrying on. Those are going to be the only individuals that are not going to have to, as a matter of survival, be part of the system that's coming. So that's what I can give you concrete. And that's why I believe that doing these other things is counterproductive. Because every moment that you waste, if you don't have those skills, if you don't have that knowledge and that wisdom, and if you don't have that orientation right now, Every moment that you waste, the flood waters are getting higher. Build your ark. Again, I am sorry if I have taken someone who otherwise would have found their way there and I have stopped them on the way and become a stumbling block. That's something that I am going to have to repent for. I'm sorry. And I will do better in the future. Thank you.